Okay. Amanda, and I, Amanda just had it. Now, the logarithm is... 2, negative 4. Stop. Oh, the exponent. The logarithm <laughs> is a question. The answer is always an exponent. What is the logarithm equal to? Y. Y. Then the exponent is going to be Y. What? So what's left is X minus 4. Take a moment, look at this, and ask me questions after you've looked at it and before you freaked out. Would you still Think back after you freaked out. Um, and is this the rearranged exponential statement that's the same thing as this logarithm? No. Okay? No. You got, here's, here's the trick. Here's those of you who are going to succeed at this are going to get over this hump very quickly. Um, this has to become the same thing in your brain as if I give you 25 equals... Whoops, I'm sorry, that's wrong. 2 equals log base 5 of 25. I hope most of you can fairly quickly now say, oh, this is the same thing as 5 squared equals 25, right? Yeah. You've got to get just as quick at rearranging these things and not worry about the fact that it's an x minus 4 instead of a 25. It's still the answer. Wait, not worry about the fact that it's a y instead of a 2. It's still the exponent. I think what gets confusing is because it's on the left side instead of the right, and then the other one it's... That's true. That's also something you can't let yeah. confuse you. I did that a little bit intentionally. I want you guys to just get used to what each thing's job is, um, not where it's sitting in the equation. Not whether it's on the left or right side. Um, but can you guys see how this is... Oh, yes, yeah. Can you guys see how this is um, the same thing as this, just rearranged? Okay, now, when we find an inverse function, what was the first thing we were supposed to do? Finding an inverse function oh, on the last test. Switch the x and y. Switch the x and y. And then get y by itself, so right? So you get two, um, y minus 4 equals 2x. Very good, Amy. y minus 4 equals 2 to the x power. Okay? okay fine. Oh, God, I did this wrong. That's <laughs> interesting. So, yeah, some people did. Um, how do you, now how do you get y by itself? You subtract, you add 4. So, uh, add 4. Right. y equals 2x plus 4. Hey. Logarithms, exponential functions, are inverses of each other. Okay, that's how one of the hints <laughs> that logarithms had to exist, that Napier had going for him before he actually figured them all out and their properties. You know what it looks tomorrow. like? Huh. Slope into form. Please don't confuse the two, though. You're right. This is y equals, I mean, it does kind of, doesn't it? But no. please don't get used to that. Wait, how did you get y equals to x? Subtracted the 4. I mean, added, added the 4. Added the 4 to both sides from here. From here, I switched the x's and y's. From here, I rearranged this. Oh, why do you switch the x's and y's? Because we're trying to find the, because I'm, I'm demonstrating that logarithms and exponential functions are inverse functions. Of You're hurting her brain. Why don't just switch something? It's like, it's like cheating. <laughs> you ever play chess, Jordan? No. There's a move in chess called castling. It's where your king can just suddenly switch places with a rook. Really? My dad taught me to play chess, and we played chess against each other, and he beat me until I started getting good. And then one day I was about to beat him, and he'd never taught me castling. And all of a sudden he just takes his rook and his king and just switches them. What is a rook? What did you I was so mad. I was like, you can't do that. He was like, oh yeah, I um, forgot to tell you that rule. Can you look it up and make sure? Yeah. I thought, castle, I thought the castles can only go straight. Stop. <laughs> um, you don't even know what a rook is. Stop talking yes, about Yes, I do. This. It's a castle. Um, all right. Well, that's all what Matt right. said. Now. Sure a rook is a castle. No. Is that true? Um, that's how something. That's how my, that's how my <laughs> rook talks. Okay, now. There's a couple of different ways to graph these. Rook. Now we're going to graph some logarithmic functions that have shifts in them. And there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I'm going to teach you my favorite way. For tonight, and if it doesn't work, we'll try another way, but um, here goes. If I ask you to graph, okay, first thing, Brian, you can wait a minute. First off, if, in the general form of a logarithmic function, a, k, and h oh, no. serve all the same functions. I thought we got rid of those. Yes, a times. Oh, it's a times. A, k, and h, sir, you're gonna be, we're going to have a, k, and 